Well, all right, here we are back at the bench, middle of February, got some penguins. I'm going to move them out of the way. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move all of these stones out of the way, and I'll get to them in a little bit. Just wanted to put them out there for the visual. First stone that I want to show everyone was this bad boy. This is an Omura. Uh, this is a coarser stone. It's a type of sandstone. Um, there's a lot of stone in Japan being sold as Omura simply because it's a sandstone. They're using the terminology to, to say that that sandstone is very coarse like this, but Omura is a special kind of stone. It's uh, very clean. You hear that? It's a very consistent sound. It's, it's coarse, you know, but it's not incredibly coarse. Um, coarse enough but it's got this like very very consistent type of feel to it if you're doing any type of corrective work Steel removal, chip removal, bevel correction, stone like this is really nice. They're really hard to get. They're really uncommon. They used to be like dime a dozen, but I think the original quarry that was known for this particular grade of Omura is uh, closed. So whatever you find now today is usually not quite as clean as this and forget finding them with a tomo but uh, i just want to show this off these are these are great stones i actually i set a bevel on it last night i had a, a little bit of a disaster I had this guy this razor now i'm going to pull the blade out i don't know if you can really see the glare is killing me but this blade this razor was from my very first video the one where I showed the horn oxy treatment to uh, repair the scales. Yesterday I was uh, handling it and the original horn scale cracked. <laughs> Ironically, not the horn oxy part. The, the horn oxy treatment that I did to repair the uh, scales held fine. But um, there was a lot of rot under the pin on one side and it just sheared through. And I, they had been so oiled that I couldn't get glue to stick and it was a really bad break it just wasn't good for a repair because like this blade is heavy really heavy okay it's wedgy you know the last thing you want to do is have scales with a fissure up in the pivot that could cause the blade to dislodge like while you're using it because you know let's say you're shaving your neck and the thing lets go that's not good as it is I dropped the blade it happened here at the bench and um, wound up hitting my foot and then hitting the floor. I was like, you know, what What else today could go wrong, right? So um, I threw these scales together. I cut some G10. Hadn't done this in years, many years. So they're not perfect. Like this isn't perfectly centered and neither. Well, that's pretty close, but the other side is a little off, I think. Cause that's mostly the beveling. Anyway, I slapped it together because I just wanted it done. I like G10 for scales. I'm not big on plastic as a rule, but but for daily use stuff, stuff I'm going to use all the time, G10 is hard to beat. It's a glass impregnated polymer. I think they call it FR4 or something. I don't know. There's like different variations on. If you look really closely along the edges here, you see like little dots. I think that's like uh, like where the glass is sitting in the plastic. Anyway, it, it's like it, impervious to almost everything, okay? It's like chemically resistant, oil resistant, water resistant. It's more of everything than micarta is. Micarta offers other things because it has like fabric running through it, so it'll tack up a little bit more. But this tacks up pretty well. I don't like it too, too polished. I like it a little matte like you see here. There's some gloss, but I stopped short. I sanded to a 1K, and then I buffed it out with Weenol, which is a metal polish. You know, wean all. And when I was done, I, I wanted to rehone it. So I set my bevel here and then I went through uh, Binsway and then I did Kesai. Then I moved to uh, Nakayama Kita, did a little bit of slurrying with uh, this lovely, lovely, lovely 
stupid nice tenju this one stone thinks it's an entire set of stones it's like ridiculous and uh then tomo slurry and so the edge on here is going to be for tonight's shave it's killer so um yeah i just wanted to show you this stone because you don't really get to see them too often and i don't talk about them a whole lot but um for people who want to do like an all natural progression a stone like this can be key um honestly it's really probably for most people better suited to uh knives but uh this is a, a work knife that i use for hacking stuff up around here um but you can use them for razors when they're this clean you can use them for razors if you have one that you don't know like someone is selling it to you and they really haven't worked with it and don't buy it for razors because chances are you're going to wind up with an uneven grit it's going to chip the shit out of your blade and you're just going to be pissed off the opening scene of the video showed you these guys now the reason these are out is because you know i like to try new stones i work with different stuff all the time uh, i don't like to stay stagnant i like to challenge myself i like to revisit uh old topics I find that a lot of people in this uh, honing thing they, they they're still running on stuff they uh they thought was true 15 years ago well good for them anyway th these are like kind of i'm just a, a loose term jaspers they're, they're really okay jasper is a funny thing main mineral you want to talk about is calchedony uh like this is a piece of flint, right? But it, but it's all, all of these are basically a very similar type of structure. It's all silicon uh, dioxide and so on and so forth. And uh, one thing that's interesting about geology, actually petrology and mineralogy, is that the science is constantly evolving. So what somebody might think now might not be what somebody thinks in 15 years. And what we think today might not be uh, exactly what was thought, you know, even 10 years ago. So it's important to keep an open mind and it's important to stay current. All right. So, uh, the reason this comes to me is somebody tells me that they bought a stone they, they spent a good amount of money on it. It's got some stupid name that I'm not going to share right now. And, uh, he said it, 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 it doesn't it doesn't you know give him a good edge. So um, we talked about it back and forth, and I gave him some ideas. And he seems to he and I both felt that it was a, a lost cause. It wasn't going to be like any any type of lapping or a different type of uh, you know honing uh, medium was going to save the day. It was just that the stone was basically subpar. So I asked him some questions about it. Uh, I never got to touch it, and I said, you know, that sounds like jasper. And uh, he went back to the seller. He was supposed to get a refund. He never got one. He was angry, you know, whatever. So I just, uh, I felt bad for the guy, you know. Um, nothing I could do. I'm not going to say who the seller is or talk about the stone. But uh, I just know it was a bad situation. Anyway, so these are all Jaspers, okay. Uh, this is like a polychrome, right? Uh, Madagascar, I think. Uh, this is... These are both from the USA. Um, uh, this is like, you want to call it a Jasper, but, you know, somebody into rocks and minerals would be calling it Flint, you know. Um, they're, they're all microcrystalline quartz. Now, so is, you know, what do you call it? Uh, Arkansas stone, micro crypto crystalline. Um, and you know what? I'm going to do a video on these too because I just got into something with some guy in a Facebook group. He's talking about this stuff like you can converse about an Arkansas stone with grit being like the focus of the conversation. And you can't, okay? But I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I'm going to stay here with this. Um, I, I have not had a lot of success with Jaspers. There was a stone that I tried that could possibly have been a Jasper. Um, it turned out to be very good. I think it's kind of a unique type of stone that somebody um, had unearthed. And uh, 
That that was like it. The rest of them, they fall into line with like agates. Now, jasper and agate, right, are essentially the same exact stone, except agates have a translucency to them and jaspers are uh, opaque. If you're talking about rocks and minerals, even though these are technically calchedony, a mineralogist will call calchedony only the pure white ones. Now, I wish I still had the pure white calchedony stone. I had I sent it to some guy in like, I don't know, New Zealand or something a long time ago. I don't know where it went. But it was a very pretty stone, very translucent, and I was able to get, you know, for lack of a, a better set of terms, uh, a, a decent shaving edge that I would equate to be nominally better than an 8K synthetic, even though there's no real, like, balance of sharpness here. I'm just Anyway, out of these stones here, um, you know, uh, this, uh, I believe, came from eBay. This is junk. Okay, this is a junk stone uh, to me for honing. It, it's pretty to look at, but it, it's not a good hone at all. It's just not bouncing a little bit. All right, uh, pretty to look at, but it doesn't hone very well. I'm going to drop in two photos, show you a close-up of the surface. Okay, now we're back from the stills, and... Well, you can see that, you know, it's not a great surface. The other thing is, this is like, I, I was lapping this on sick powder, SIC, silicon carbide. It, it's almost impervious to it. It's ridiculously hard. It takes forever to lap. It doesn't want to be flat. Um, and it, it will polish up. You see, this side is looking a lot smoother, but um, this side has like, a, like you can't see them, but there's like, a, there are gouges in the stone. You know, and this is supposed to be sold as a great razor hone. It's not. It's just not a great razor hone. You may possibly be able to run a pocket knife on this and get some type of cutting edge out of it. But honestly, you know, th these are inexpensive too, considering. Like the, the thing that the guy got ripped off on, uh, that, that stone was a lot of money. These are relatively cheap, but still not a great home now it came with this which is very interesting and you know it's an interesting stone again but it doesn't have a great surface and um, it's really too narrow for razors but i was working on it with you know knives like this and, and what have you and what i get mostly is burnishing not not fine cutting not real polishing in the sense where like most honing and sharpening is based on stones that have an abrasive and the finer abrasive um, abrades the steel finer and finer and finer and the scratches now closer and closer and closer and thinner and, and narrower you get a more reflective surface and so on and so forth with, with this I'm getting a smearing burnishing you know and that was always my problem with Jasper and agate all right um, just you know it, it there's a reason that Jasper hasn't been really sold commercially as a sharpening stone I mean, there's a shit ton of it. It's not particularly valuable or, or rare. There's Jasper everywhere. Why do you think, if this was good stuff, don't you think like, I don't know, Norton or somebody would have like started packaging it? You, you know why? Because it's not a good mineral for that. It Sometimes you get lucky, other times not so much. This one, very pretty stone. This is like a Madagascar, what they call polychrome Jasper. This dark section in the middle, Okay is nearly okay to good for sharpening nearly this brown stuff is soft as hell and totally counterproductive to sharpening efforts but it's really nice looking stone and uh, this lapped a lot easier and it was still hard it's very hard to lap these oh but you're not really sharpening you know what i mean it's like you're just smoothing over the surface you're smearing it and it's very hard to balance that action when you're talking about uh, like a surgically sharp edge. Um, it, it's if you think about two planes coming together to make a point, okay? If you're literally smearing the surface down, you're never going to come to a point, okay? There's always going to be more rounding, okay? So there's this trade-off. You can get like a few passes, you know, and um, 
That's it. Done. There's an old uh, barber manual that talks about using hematite in this fashion. And they, they tell you if you go more than like four or five passes, you're going to blunt your edge. They're not making that up. That's what happens. Hematite is a different type of stone than this, but I'm just talking about you know, general principles. You're blunting the edge by smoothing out the, the face. You may get some smoothness. You're probably, it would be impossible to really get sharper, but you may pick up some smooth. Anyway, now this guy, this is flint. Now flint is like a calcedony. It's microcrystalline, cryptocrystalline. Um, theoretically, the grain in something referred to as flint, flint would have a much finer type of grain in it than, say, a typical agate. You know, um, this is like a brecciated piece where you can see over here, you have like, looks like nodules of stone that have come together. And again, this did not want to um, lap well. There's a, I don't know if you can see it, I have a, where is it? It's right here at the point of the blade. So there's like a, a major flaw in the surface that would probably take like a year and a half to uh, iron out. A very pretty type of model type of stone. It makes a nice platform for things. It makes a nice paperweight. But uh, trying to use this, uh, you can't you hear it. You're never going to get that out. You'd have to cut. You'd need a giant piece of this, and then you'd have to cut out a usable section. This part too, right here. There's like saw blade marks going through it, which is one thing. But there's also, you can't really, it's hard to see, but right in this area here, like some of these darker spots, they're like smearing, right? And, and that's kind of like what was going on with this. If I had to use one of these for a hone, I would go with this. I would do like four or five laps on each side, and then that, that would be it. The reason I'm not showing you a razor on this is because these things will kill all of my edges, okay? They're just, you know, uh, they, I have nothing here that I would that I would run on this. I would have to rehone, okay? I, it's just not something I want to get into. So anyway, look, if you're uh, shopping on eBay, if you're out in a mineral shop and some guy tells you that, you know, Jasper is the next greatest thing, keep an open mind, look at the stone, see if you got a return policy that you can actually act upon. Take it home and experiment if you feel you have to do it. But I'm going to tell you, 90% of the time, you're going to wind up with, you know, this type of thing. Pretty stuff. Doesn't do much. I'm going to, like, give some of this away, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give that away. You know what? I'm going to give some stuff away. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. Um, hold on. You guys up for a giveaway? I haven't done a giveaway in a really long time. So what we're going to do... <clears throat> Okay, we're going to give this lovely Jasper that is backed with some type of unknown stone, according to the seller, that he thinks could possibly be a piece of basalt. Personally, I think it's a nice rock for your garden, but you're welcome to give it a spin. Okay, and that's the wonderful thing about honing. Try stuff. Just don't try it with your favorite razor. All right, so in the giveaway, you got this, right? I'm going to give you a block of Binsway block of Kasai. Bensuedo, Kasai though. These are kind of small. They're not big stones. But if you have small knives, you can work on it on this with a razor. Sure you could. Um, where's that stupid gold dollar? Yeah, I got this. Oh, here it is. This thing is like the scales are eating themselves. Every day I open it up, it's like twisting in a new position. I, I don't know what kind of plastic they made these things out of, but it's like it's like thermoset that never set. <laughs> like like okay, now the blade is closing, but before it was like banging into it's just crap, right? So you know you can hone on this, see? Bom bomb, you could do that. Um you get a little taste of Casido and Bensuedo. Um I realize, you know, I've never I've had a few giveaways. I've never given away Nagura. Give away stones, give away catacules, give away naniwas, give away choceres, a ton of shit. I've given like a, literally a shit ton of gear away over the years because, you know, you, you got to give stuff back. You have to, okay? So I'm going to give away a set of Nagura. That's right. This is a pretty dope set of Nagura. All right. 
So what do we got? You got a Kasaido Nagura that matches this. So you want to raise slurry. Perfect, right? I'm giving you the big uh, hunk of Binsue. And then you're going to get a Binsue Nagura. So that's two nice guys there. Nice piece of chew Nagura. Real chew. Like serious chew. This is like good stuff. Okay. I use a piece like this all the time. I uh, made a reference to some Mikawa Nagura being like chew and uh, it was like some seller from Etsy. I lost his freaking mind. Apparently, he's fucking brain dead and clueless and doesn't understand that chew is pretty fine stuff. But hey, the world is full of these people that sit around regurgitating bullshit they think they read on the internet. And harder stones. Okay, this is really nice. I'm going to get a piece of Uchigomori. Okay, really nice. A little bit of a line in there. It's innocuous. If you find that the line is bothering you, just scratch it out or use this side or something. It's like no big deal. Part of life with Japanese stones. This is actually a tomo I've been using for a couple of weeks. It's actually the tomo I honed my uh, Wade and Butcher on last night. I have a couple of pieces of it. I know this one to be good, really good. So, um, sure, I'm giving it away. Why? Because why not? Okay. Now, these two, these are also... Finishing stone quality. This one's uh, a little softer, and this one's a little harder than this one. But this is a little harder than that. At least I feel so. It's close, but when you can see the different types of stone, they, they look on the camera. They look kind of the same, but they're not. All right. I think this is a little bit finer, at least to start off with. Um, this is a little bit coarser, at least to start off with. This is kind of in the middle. This is a nice chunk. This is... That, that's got some weight to it, man. Uh, these are all really fine, hand-selected, <clears throat> chosen Nagurus that, you know, I sell this stuff in my Etsy store. I got a bunch of them. Anyway, this is a really nice set of Nagura. You got four, seven pieces. You're getting two blocks here. You're getting this lovely yard stone that may sharpen something for you someday. Okay, you never know. You never know. All right? And wait, I'm not done. Okay, move that out of the way. Okay, here we have new stone from Naniwa Habiki. 3K stone. It's a soaker. I've been testing it. It's very interesting. It's very consistent. It's got a very smooth feel. It takes a couple days to dry out. It takes literally almost no time to soak. It just... I don't understand. It, it's ready to go, like right out of the gate. Just zoom, you know. Um, you can get right to honing, but I suggest, like, you know, letting water sit on it for at least a minute. <laughs> Let it soak in. If you put water on, it goes away. Add more water, and then it'll sit there, and then you're pretty much ready to go. Not a stone for using slurry. It's a mid range, early mid range, post bevel set. Could you set a bevel on it? Mm, yeah, maybe. If you had, like, a really fine uh, full hollow. Anyway, so this is going in the giveaway right these are not for sale here in the states yet i don't think um i don't know what the story is and last but not least i'm going to throw this in because i don't know what else to do with it the fact of the matter is it's a decent piece of stone this is the tushima black nagura this is the kind you can buy on amazon the, you know the guy sells them as 12k we, we've been through this it's not 12k okay um, anybody who thinks this is 12k should probably give up honing razors and start collecting stamps um, no, seriously. But anyway, it's got a nice leather case. It's a nice mid-range Nagura. All right. It's good on uh, your hard finishing stones. You can hone like pocket knives on it. You can do all types of stuff. It's big enough for that. If you have, uh, here's my, uh, what do you call it? My little utility knife. You know, I could, could do that. No problem. Anyway, so what do you got? Two nice pieces of stone. You got a little shit ton of Nagura here. And you got a Naniwa Habiki. All right. I think that's pretty cool, right? Let me put some penguins in here as we're closing out. Anyway, listen. Um, I'm in a good mood. You should be in a good mood. Spring is coming. Um, I'm not looking forward to summer, but um, spring could be cool. Wait, this pile of stones, um, it's a giveaway. So how do you uh, enter yourself into the giveaway? Well, first thing, I need to have 100 people involved in this okay so if i don't reach a hundred comments 
um, then the giveaway will be off. So I need 100 comments, and I want you to put hashtag Team Tomo. You know what hashtag is, right? The little, you know, tic-tac-toe box hashtag, right? Okay. Hashtag Team Tomo. Just put that in your comment. Do not mention that there's a freebie, because if you mention that there's a freebie, you're disqualified. Okay? I hate to be a hard ass, but the world is full of people that look for keywords and free shit, and I just don't want to have to weed through them. Okay, so you do the Team Tomo thing. And... Uh, uh, let's just leave it at that. Let's just keep it simple. All right. So I need 100 Team Tomo hashtags and then the giveaway is on and then I'll uh, assemble the names and pick somebody. Maybe uh, I'll ask my wife to do it until the next video comes out in a week or two or three or four. Um, I don't do a video like every two days like some guys because it's just too much. Anyway, once a month is usually enough of me twice a month when... I have the time. So anyway, there will be another video soon enough. Until then, take care, do some honing, have some fun. Remember, remember, have fun. <laughs> it's always about having fun. Take care. Talk to you soon.